Welcome aboard all. This week a little bit of a change of pace for the channel. I'm going to go to back to a few how-to videos which I haven't done for some time. So those of you who have been following me on my Facebook page, I've been getting into a lot of 3D printing which I believe is the 3D printing side of things has revolutionized our hobby you know, for all our little detail parts that you often can't buy but also comes with its inherent dangers due to the chemicals that we're using. So I'm going to walk us through how I've work through my workflow um, and clean up to keep us all safe. For those who don't know me, I'm Daz from Modero Techniques. Our YouTube channel produces predominantly video podcasts, but obviously this week we're doing some how-to videos for a good mix. If you know of a model or I'd like to be interviewed, please reach out below. Um, I'll link the in the description my email address and also if there's any other how-to videos you would, would you like me to attempt, please reach out. Do not forget to subscribe and like and click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming content so you don't miss anything out. Big shout out to our super fans out there who are supporting the channel. Also a link below if you'd like to become a super fan, I'll have a Patreon page so every little bit counts. Without further ado, let's get started. So now we're going to look at some of the tools for my post-production. So the first little thing there is a plastic scraper. So that, are used, that is used to scrape away errant sort of particles out of the actual resin vat. Next one is the metal scraper. So please don't use this in the resin vat because you'll ruin it. So this is to get the actual print off the metal build plate. So next thing, very importantly, I always wear goggles. You don't definitely want to, from a safety aspect, is splash any of this type of resin in, definitely into your eyes and your mouth. Now I use a sort of 3M respirator there. So now the reason I do that, it is a very well ventilated room, but I'm still finding I do, I can smell some of the, the chemical coming through. And probably one of the most important things is for, for the safety aspect is uh, the rubber gloves, because you don't definitely don't want to get this resin on your hands so here is my first step so this is where the build plate will go to so the reason i do that is it's like a bit of a reservoir that will catch any of the resin when it comes off the build plate so what that's constructed out of that's actually a pet feeding mat so it's made out of silicon rubber with just a slight little edge around it which is quite easy to, to clean up even once the little resin goes off as you can probably see in it there's a little bit of resin that ha has gone hard So this next little scene is how I will set up prior to my print. So printer on the far left hand side there, then the silicon mat just as I showed you. So the reason I'm showing you this is I'm setting up what I'm going to call areas of contamination or, or, or of the hazard. So what I mean by that is if I come out of the printer, as you can see it's still attached there to the mat where you get the metal scraper to scrape all the parts off where the resin just sits on the, the mat. Then what I do is then it goes over to my wash station. So before we move on to show you actually how I put this all together in a print, here's just a little bit close up version of my cleaning station. So I have all my tools ready. So far left, obviously this is the metal scraper to get the, the particles or the prints off the build plate, the toothbrush, and also the, the plastic scraper isopropanol. And also you can see some prints there that are drying, ready to be, to, uh, Put to the uv light for hardening so this part of the wash station still make it absolutely clear so when you're touching any of this stuff is all with rubber gloves on so as you work across the station you're looking at contaminated products I stated before obviously you go through a lot of paper towel so that's probably just a pertinent point to to go over here so all your consumables like paper towels your rubber gloves and the like you do go through a hell of a lot of them. You obviously can't reuse, particularly the rubber gloves and the paper towel. Definitely can't reuse them. So I have in my bin within my, my shed area, which is where I do my printing, another plastic bag, which is, so when I've got my rubber gloves on, I will then put everything into the, into the bag. So when that bag fills up, I tie it off. So it's all nice and safe to uh, dispose in the, the waste trash. So what we'll do here is I'll show you from start to finish how I go through this process. So some of it is stock footage, so you will see it chop and change around a little bit. So obviously you can see the, the, the print is at the end. You can sort of see the build plate as it raises up to its final location so we can actually take it off. So I stated before, here's some of the stock footage I was talking about. So 
as you can see, I have don't have my rubber gloves on at this point in time. But what I'm actually doing is just undoing those knobs and all that so these items can be released. Because the last thing that you want is to get any resin on those knobs. However, at this point is where I will add or put my PPE on. So once the build plate comes off, I just hold it over the vat for a few seconds just to try to drip some of that extra resin into there. Then straight across to that rubber mat where I'll leave it for a few minutes before I start trying to remove the print with them. So at this point, this is where the PPE really comes into its own. So this is where you use the metal spatula to get the prints off. So glasses are very, very important here. So I've, when you're trying to scrape the, the print off the, the bill plate, it's quite often that resin will get flicked. So it's obviously quite important. So at that point, you can see I just pop that into my isopropanol bath as I'm getting the rest of the prints off. So once I get all the parts into the bath, I sort of just give it a bit of a swirl around, which I've done there. You can see obviously the isopropanol sort of discolors. And it's just a matter of getting the toothbrush out, just lightly scrubbing over them. Just be careful not to obviously break the part because some of them are quite delicate, well, these ones are anyway. So for give you some sort of idea, these are ducting leads for lines out details. It's obviously quite important to also be using your PPE for this step as well, particularly glasses because propanol, isopropanol in your eyes is probably not a great thing i just go back through just another swirl through just to get rid of the the last of the resin at this point i'll put the parts over on basket to drain so at this point of the this is the first step of the cleanup so what i'm doing here with a little plastic spatula is just rubbing it across the bottom of the the uh, the resin vat just to see whether there's any imperfections or anything i like in it so what often will happen if you get a misprint you'll get some cured resin on the bottom of the vat. So it's just a matter of just lightly scraping that off. The reason being, if that resin is left there, you'll have real issues with subsequent print. So at this point, it's time to clean the build plate up. So you can either wear a fresh pair of gloves, which I suggest, is you just start wiping that build plate over so that footage is not real great, just to get that resin off. So what I'll actually do is use either isopropanol or methylated spirits just to get rid of all that resin off it, ready for the next print. So the cleaning process continues. So it's just a matter of using your paper towels. I said before, you go through a lot of paper towels, so I have a lot of them ready. Just a matter of cleaning up the mat. Uh, quite easy to do at this point. I'll probably end up buying more of these mats because they're just fantastic. They're very easy to clean up and they only cost a few bucks off Amazon. The next part of the cleanup is to make sure we clean out the vat properly. As you can see, stock footage. I'm now experimenting with some any cubic white resin. So we'll see how that goes. So at this point, all the little knobs and all that are undone. So it's just a matter of pulling the build plate out. At this point, what I've got ready here is what you can actually see there is like a little strainer in a funnel. So what the strainer does, if there's any cured sort of or semi cured sort of resin in there it won't go back into the main bottle so it's just a matter of pouring the resin back into it i'll just let it sit there for as long as i can uh, just to get as much of that out as it can because it is quite an expensive commodity so at this point i grabbed a little plastic scraper always use a plastic scraper on the, the vat and i'm just scraping just as much of that resin as i can get out as possible so not waste it Next part here is to actually clean up the, all the resin out of the vat. So fresh paper towel, give it an initial wipe over just to get all the nooks and crannies because what the resin has a tendency doing, there's a, just a small gap between the bottom of the, the metal part of the build plate and the, that, that plastic film there. So it's just a matter of getting much of that resin out as you can. So once you've removed most of the, the resin, I just spray a little bit of isopropanol in there. Just a matter of now, this is uh, getting the, the really finite clean into it to getting all that resin out. Because if you obviously leave the resin in there, it goes to the UV light and it will just go hard and it will actually ruin your your resin vat. So you can see the cleanup of uh, the resin is, <laughs> you make a filthy mess. So you can sort of see that that vat is quite clean, but have a look at my gloves there, that glistening, that's obviously contamination from the resin. This is one of the major reasons why I never tr touch the, the resin vat at any part of this process without any gloves on. Purely because it's always at some point has some sort of contamination due to the resin on it. So the last step of this process, I just give the, 
the UV screen, a little, little bit of a, a wipe over with a microfiber and some isopropyl if needs be. You can see in the bottom right hand corner there, I've actually damaged my screen. So please, between prints, make sure you check that you haven't had any leakage out from underneath the resin vat onto the UV screen. That's what I did. So please learn from my, my mistakes. So this is the end of this very, very quick tutorial. So just recapping, obviously I've gone through the PPE or personal protective equipment that I use for my prints, which is obviously very, very important to keep us safe. And then obviously the workflow station, how I move across from post print, taking the build plate off the printer and how I then go about cleaning up the prints. So for information, the printer I'm currently using is the Anycubic Photon Mono, which is the, one of the new UV screens. The UV screen is just uh, allows the, the print to quick a lot print, uh, sorry, to cure the print a lot quicker. So please, before you sort of start diving into STL printing or resin printing, I should say, please work out what your workflow is going to be. You can make a hell of a mess cleaning up after yourself with these printers. I probably suggest you don't do it on the kitchen table or anything like that because the smell of these printers is, is quite significant, I found. So thanks for watching. Uh, I probably will be doing some more 3D printing videos coming up, I think. So that was a lot of fun. So, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Make sure you subscribe. Click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos. Support us on Patreon. Like us on Facebook and Instagram at Model Railroad Technique.